Hey guys, what's up? It's Johnny here, sitting again, still broken, still ankle. That's all good, man. Two weeks to go, and welcome to another episode of the Six Show. And I'm here with my main man, B. How are you, my brother? Yeah, man, I'm doing great today. <laughs> awesome. This week on the show, I'm going to share a little story about my new ride. And Johnny's going to inspire us with some great images that he shot with a tripod, and he's going to talk about tripods. Which 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 is the best tripod for you? What to look for when you're buying a tripod? Awesome. Yeah, let's do it, man. The Six Show. Share, inspire, Share. Hey, buddy. Yeah. I wanted to share with you my new pimped out ride I've got at home. As you guys know, I've uh, still got a broken ankle and there's about two and a half weeks to go. Probably by the time you see this, it's more like two weeks. But um, <laughs> check out this, man. Uh, so I'm just going to put an image up on screen now. <laughs> it's called a knee scooter. You know what it is? You basically it's got a big pad and the handlebars, and it's like one of those normal scooters, kid rides sort of thing. Yeah. Except it's got four wheels, so it keeps itself upright, which is awesome for me. It's like having training wheels. I absolutely love it. But you put your knee on it, man, and you use your you put your bad leg on your knee because it's my ankle, so I can put okay. pressure on my yeah. knee. Yeah. And then I use my other leg to push myself around. Okay. Man, I've been flying around the house. I can move quicker on this thing around the house than I can walking. Really? It's ace, man. <laughs> and you know what? The best thing is. You can't see it in the photo, but there's actually a little basket that goes on the front, man. Uh, I put all my goodies in there. Mate, I am super stoked. So how are you going to pimp this thing out? Yeah, I know. It needs hey? some mags, and I reckon we could lower it a bit Can more. Can we put like a Lumo light underneath or something? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> put like a stereo in somewhere too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah totally. <laughs> iPod dock, yeah. That's yeah, it, so man. what do you call it? Oh, I don't know. I just call it my low rider, man. This is a stride on low okay, rider. Okay, okay. Yeah. <laughs> so if you go really fast with one leg, do you go in circles? Yeah, you do, man. Yeah, and the faster. But the thing is, you know, you go really fast in circles. That's the beauty about it. So. Okay, good. <laughs> cool, man. So awesome. I just wanted to share that little bit, little thing. And you know the best thing? Actually, guys, the best thing about it is it gets me off the tripods, which, man, the tripods are just killing my back. Tripods? Eh? Oh, tripods. <laughs> <laughs> Crutches. <laughs> Crutches. That's what I was trying to <laughs> Get you off the trouble. Yeah, yeah. So I use this one under my right arm. <laughs> no, no, I'm joking. No, it gets me off these things, man. These things are deadly, bro. I seriously, seriously hurt my back, eh? Hey? But um, put me in on my back for like four days after yeah. like, you know, a week of using them. That's crazy, man. Yeah. Anyway, so that's my new ride. I just wanted to share it with you guys. Something bit, something yeah. a bit different and fun. I, I like never, it. Never seen it before. We're going to pimp man, it out, man. I'll tell you what, me. next time I break my ankle, which is hopefully never, but if I do, man, I'll be going to get one of these the first okay. week, man, because okay. I love it. Awesome. awesome. <laughs> Inspire. All right, buddy. So, what have you got to inspire us with? Yeah. So, I just want to show you through a, some of some a couple of my images here that wouldn't have been possible without using a tripod, and explain to you why that is. So, I've got a little screencast running. So, let's jump over to that and have a quick, quick look now. Okay. So, this first image, um, you may have all seen this before, but man, I just love this image. Every yeah. time I see it, I just go, "Woo! I took that! Yay!" But anyway, this is Tomary Head, and and this is a I call the suck out effect. This is when the wave washed in and washed out. And I'm I'm got my camera mounted on a solid tripod here, and because I've had to use a slightly longer shutter speed, I had to be locked down on a tripod. There's no other way I could have captured this image without my tripod. So that's the first one. I love that. I love that shot. The the wave and the yeah. the white water going out, suck yeah. out. Yeah, love it. Man. Just like leading. And it's lines. actually yeah, leading lines like, up yeah. to the the headland over there. The Beautiful. Primary headland. Yeah. Beautiful. Great. So next one, and you th you think to yourself, ah, oh, okay. So why would this be? Why would I have to use a tripod here? And basically what I was doing with this is I had myself set up on a tripod. The waves are breaking in pretty much the same spot. But because I'm panning, and you can do this handheld, but you've got to remember, this is sunset, so the light is quite low. So, you know, even though I was on like shooting it, like I can't remember what the shutter speed was, but it was pretty, pretty, pretty slow. Okay. I, and what gives it that streaking motion too is I'm panning when the waves come in. So I'm on a tripod. Um, it's, it's loosely, it's not totally locked down, so I've got a bit of movement, yeah. but it's still doing a lot of stabilization. Okay. Yeah. And I'm panning with the wave while shooting a slightly longer shutter speed and um, getting this effect. So mm. I was locked down on a tripod for this, and it, and I tell you what, it made it a hell of a lot easier to get this shot. You mm. know, in low light conditions, get that movement, and um, yeah, something a bit abstract and arty. So. so you could do that with a monopod too, right? You could, you yeah. could, you certainly could do it with a monopod, but um, yeah. I, to be honest, unless you're unless you're like a videographer or unless you're like got big lenses, you know, you see the see the guys shooting sports and they'll often have their five hundred mil, six hundred mil lens yeah. mounted on, on, a, monopod. on a monopod. Yeah. I wouldn't. I wouldn't say run out and grab one because yeah. the amount of times we've actually used our monopods that we've got, Brent, is very 
far and few between. They're awesome for run and gunning. When you're doing video and you're running and gunning, yeah. and we'll show you a monopod a bit later, um, they're awesome for that. And yeah. if you've got a really heavy lens, but then again, you know, if you've got a really heavy lens in low light, you're going to want a full tripod. Yeah, so, yeah. I mean, yeah, sports maybe when you're running and gunning and it's nice and bright, perfect. But um, yeah, for that extra stabilization, but yeah. I, I wouldn't recommend you running again. Yeah. It's not, definitely not my first. A couple of days ago, someone emailed me and asked me whether they should take a uh, monopod off on a trip to America, and I said no. <laughs> You're not going to use it. Yeah, yeah, take a take a small tripod. Take a tripod and, and we'll show or you. nothing. Yeah, 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 that's it. We've yeah. got a travel tripod. I recommend if you kind of even if you just grab a little travel tripod, it's still better than nothing at yeah. all. And then I'll show you one a bit later. Okay, next image, man. So this again, this is the suck out and what's happened. The lights just pop through that little gap. Man, I had about literally 30 seconds to take this image and um, I, I only got about four or five frames off. Yeah. And what's happened in those, those streaks you can see in the foreground, guys, they're actually little bubbles, okay? So it's the bubbles from the whitewater that came oh, in. That's the catching that's been the sunlight. Out. Yeah. It's catching the sunlight. Oh, so, lovely. So that's another image, man. I, I love this image. Oh, I me mean, too. that foreground is just so unique. I haven't seen that in many images before. And I certainly, this is one of my portfolio. Oh, definitely. Image. Yeah, cool, yeah, man. So, so the next one, this one's slightly different. So we've got sunset now, okay? We've got low light, okay? So there's low light conditions. I'm locked down on a tripod, okay, and um, and you can see why. I mean, it was it wasn't a very rough day for starters, okay. There wasn't much swell, but you can see the tripod is giving the water even a smoother, glossier look, you know. And and what that does too is is that helps with that reflection of the of the clouds and the light coming through. You can see how intense the reflection is on top mm. of the water. If that water was all broken up and not silky smooth, you don't get that nice reflection there. The other thing that's really nice too, if you look down in the foreground here. Let we'll that load up. I'm just um, letting it load up there on the screencast. But um, you can see there's like these little swirls yeah, in the foreground. It's cool. And it's really cool. It's still loading up there, guys. My, my poor old MacBook Pro, I think it's due for retirement very uh, soon. <laughs> okay. Maybe she got peace. <clears throat> Hell no. Windows 10. Hell no. <laughs> Hell no. <laughs> Nothing against Windows, but yeah, I'm just used to my Mac. So what you can see, the little bubbles are creating this little swirl effect, which is also I couldn't have got without having my tripod. All right, so and this little swell effect is really cool. It just adds a bit more uh, interest in the foreground. So, yeah. pretty cool, man. Next Love one, it. let's jump on the next one. Okay, of course, oh, waterfall, yeah. man. Yeah. Long exposure, Catlins, uh, New, New Zealand, New Zealand. Just beautiful, yeah. man. There's no way in hell I could have got this beautiful, silky smooth water without having my tripod. Yes, it's just a must, man. You, you know? have to waterfalls, yeah. and I've been shooting waterfalls like last week, and mm -hmm. yeah, definitely tripods are one thing. Yeah, you need You've it. Got to have it. You, you yeah. got to have it, man. You got to have it. So, and the last image here, of course, is sunrise. Okay, yeah. so. Low light conditions and man, you've got to have actually, to shoot. Oh. Actually before sunrise, right? Yeah, or oh, just before. Yeah. yeah, the sun hasn't come up. So this is yeah. this image is just before sunrise. Um, this is another shot from Cannibal Bay in New Zealand. And um, yeah, basically without my tripod in these low light conditions, I would have had to crank the ISO to 51 million. I don't know. What <laughs> I really don't know what the highest is. Wh anyway, which camera is that? Yeah, I don't know, camera, man. Okay, it's, right. it's a new secret one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, yeah. the Johnny. Produced by, uh, yeah, yeah, anyway. <laughs> Actually, Canon produced one recently. It's got some. Oh, anyway, it doesn't matter. Yeah. It, it, All right. Anyway, a I, huge ISO yeah, range. Yeah, it's yeah. massive. It's a massive ISO really? range. I don't know. I haven't seen any tests okay. yet. But anyway. Okay. Right. Um, but anyway, so I wouldn't have come in on the catch of this sunrise and get great detail without cranking the ISO. And, you know, I still, even then, cranking the ISO, man, I wouldn't have got a fast enough shutter to handhold this. And it's just impossible. So, you know, to keep your image quality, keep your ISO down and keep the keep a um, long enough shutter speed to capture enough without underexposing, I had to be on a tripod. Yeah. So, yeah. all right, and the last example I wanted to show you guys, this is a macro image, okay? So, with macro, again, you know, it's it's it doesn't matter what time of day you shoot macro, you should be locked down on a tripod yeah. because you need to have no movement in that tripod. I mean, the slightest little bit of movement, and you guys will it's know. magnified. Yeah, oh, yeah. oh my, yeah, so because of the one-to-one -one magnification. The slightest, even the little bit of wind, man, like you'll get movement in your yeah. ear. So you need a nice sturdy tripod for macro. You need to be locked down, and um, yeah, it's a it's a, it's a must for shooting macro mm. being locked down on a tripod. So man, there's some few Love images it. there I wanted to show you guys. Great. And um, so basically, the rule of thumb, you know, like after buying your camera and your lens, man. The tripod is probably the next thing, you know, mm. a good camera bag, of course. Yeah. Probably camera lens, a good camera bag, and then a tripod. Yeah. Man. Seriously, because, man, you can do so much once you have a tripod. And once you get used to carrying it, it really isn't a hassle. And once you get used to the images you can take by owning a tripod, yeah. man, it's just just yeah. awesome, bro. If you're so, a landscape photographer, obviously. Yeah, landscape. If you're shooting definitely. portraits, you probably don't need it. Yeah, probably yeah. not. But yeah. we're talking a bit yeah. more landscape. And then, the, and then the next thing to get, guys, polarizing, circular polarizing filter. Definitely, man, yeah. in that order. So yeah. camera lens, yeah, bag, bag. tripod, yeah. and then a circular polarizer, definitely, yeah. man. 
All right, bro. Um, let's awesome. get let's get into the next bit. I okay. want to talk about uh, tripods. Awesome. Let's get cool, into man. it. Create. All right, buddy. So show us these tripods you've been talking about. Yeah. Okay. So before I get started, I want to I want to tell you guys. Okay. Basically, tripods. It really comes down to personal preference with a lot of things. Okay. There's some there's some things I'm going to recommend today. I'm not going to talk about brands. Okay. There, there's the brands range from anything up to thousands to you know a hundred dollars. Yeah. You know, there's there's so much range in there, and really, you just got to buy the one you guys can afford. There's no Hard and fast rules, okay? And, and usually usually what you pay for in most in tripods is, you know, you've got the old steelies, which I don't even know if you can get a steel tripod anymore. I mean, you... I've got one. You've got one, yeah. yeah. Actually, there, yeah, I think and, that's a steel one. Yeah, you've got a steel one. And yeah. I know, Brent, um, and the other thing to look for too, guys, is often you'll see good secondhand tripods. And, and don't discount them, you know. If you yeah. haven't got a tripod at all and you can afford a secondhand tripod just to get your camera locked down, do it. Because, man, I'll tell you what, there's so much you can do. And we talked about that in the Inspire section. There's so much you can do once you do own a tripod. So don't discount that, okay? Um, so basically what you're looking at, you've got your steel tripod, which is obviously going to be quite heavy but really sturdy, often great for video and obviously if you're, not, if you're on a budget. And then you've got your aluminium tripod. You move to that, your aluminium legs, okay? We've got a few. Yeah. Um, actually, your one's aluminium, your old school one. Yeah, you've and, got. It, and, it, and if you're watching this from America, aluminium. Aluminium, yeah, yeah. aluminium, aluminium. <laughs> And then you start to move into the carbon fiber, and I've got a few of those I can show you here in a minute, and they just become lighter and stronger, and often they're, you know, if you're going to travel with a tripod, you want to look at something carbon fiber, okay? Yeah. So I'm going to start with um, the little travel tripod here, and um, basically you can see with this little tripod, you can see how tiny it is. You can yeah. easily almost fit that Which into a lot of kit. It's pretty light, That's, man. Yeah, not too it's bad. It's pretty light, yeah. okay? Um, one thing, one thing um, I would say about travel tripods, okay, if, if your tripod that you're going to buy is going to be the only tripod you're going to use all the time, be really careful which one you buy, okay? And yeah. what I say, what I mean by that is, this is great. It's small, it's compact, you can backpack with this and, and go wherever you want. But for an everyday tripod, it's a little bit small. It's yeah. a little bit too small. So you mean not high enough? Yeah, not, well, for me, not high enough. And and the second thing is, you know, you start getting a decent length lens on this, it becomes a little bit unstable. Uh, okay. you know? And if yeah. you put this in the water with a bit of surge, you know, what we showed a couple of those images before, yeah. it becomes almost unusable. Yeah. Okay. So when you start to do really long exposures and things like that and lockdown for macro, you know, I mean, this is better, better than having no tripod with you at all, you mm -hmm. know, when you're traveling. But I would say in general, having a travel tripod, um, buy something just a slightly bit bigger than something like this and you'll be able to use it every day. So yeah. it can be your travel tripod, but it can also be your everyday, everyday tripod. tripod yeah. yeah, so basically this one, the legs just fold out. Okay. Woohoo! Woohoo! <laughs> Woo <-hoo -hoo. laughs> there you go. Yeah, so there you go. So that's that's a oh. little travel tripod. And um, it's, uh, yeah, really handy. Um, it's got a little ball head on it as well. And yeah. we'll talk about heads in a minute. So I wanted to, I wanted to show you um, the next size up, okay? So this is this would probably be the next size up. So all these are carbon fiber guys, okay? Um, this is probably the next size up, and this is what I'd recommend, something around this sort of height. And we'll put it up, maybe you'll see, like they're not extended, but you can see how much bigger and beefier this size is compared to this size, okay? So this is something you could still either carry on to, to the plane. And I know um, Jay and Verena, they carry their tripods onto the plane, yeah. you know, when they with their camera bag. Or what I do with my tripod, which I'll show you in a minute, is I'll actually put it in my check bag. So that's the other yeah. thing as well when you're traveling. So I'd recommend you go for something a tiny bit bigger and, and it's just gonna make it more useful. So this tripod, it, it pretty much do anything you need it to do this size. You know, you can put a decent lens on it and you can um, lift the legs up and put it low to the ground. And yeah, so that's, that's it's a more versatile, mm -hmm. all round tripod. But if you're really looking for something small, then you know, the travel tripod is definitely the way to go. Yep. Okay, and then we move on to this fella, okay? The big this one. Is, this is Big Bertha, okay? So this <laughs> one is carbon fiber. It's got a big ball head on it, okay? This one's gonna stick even out of frame because it's just massive. And I actually travel with this one, Brett. So the ball head comes off it and this one fits in my bag. It's quite heavy, okay? And it's right in front of my face when I'm talking. <laughs> it's quite a big tripod, yeah. So you can see the sort of difference. You can <laughs> the range you can see there, guys. So we've got the travel, we've got a medium size, and we've got something larger. Okay. Yeah. So I'll get out the way so you can show. Yeah. There we go. Yeah, yeah. So so the main things to look for when you're buying a tripod, okay, is obviously buying a brand that's in budget. I mean that that's a big point, and I'm going to keep emphasizing that. You know, you don't have to buy the latest and greatest, lightest thing out there because, it, it, man, you just want to get yourself into a tripod and, and get one at your budget, okay? Mm -hmm. um, but I highly recommend going for something this size. This one here, I would definitely say it's too big, 
it's too big to travel with. Yeah. I'm finding this thing too big and heavy to travel with, you know? And these days, if you've gone to a mirrorless system or a Microsoft Thirds or something like that, you're never going to need, need, yeah. need a tripod yeah. this big, okay? Never, ever. Yeah. <laughs> so it is way too big. I'm probably going to actually downsize eventually. So okay. I'll still use this one around, the, around home yeah. and things like that and, and, and blowing conditions when we're trying to do things, you know, so I really need it locked down. And, but um, yeah, that's, that's about, yeah. yeah, that's about it. So, so Johnny, when it comes to choosing the right tripod for you, mm-hmm. what 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 would you consider? So the, the main things to consider, obviously, is to make sure the tripod you buy uh, is going to be um, suitable for your camera, and also something that's going to be able to come up to your height. Okay. So I mean, so but, basically the camera weight, right? Yeah, so that's the, a big, and the lens that you got yes, on it. Yes, that's so, right, definitely. Okay. So we might put the big one down, man. Yeah, the big okay. Berth is just like ridiculous. <laughs> that's okay. Right. Yeah. We'll so that's that's the here. main two things. Oh, look at brother is just making sure you're buying something that's going to be suitable for your camera and lens combination your biggest lens combination mm-hmm. okay because sometimes even with landscape photography you know we want to put our long lens on we want to zoom in and get details so we still need to be locked down on tripod with our longer lenses okay so the next thing to consider and i'll probably actually i should show big bertha here this is one thing that i really don't like about the medium sized tripod i showed you if you see here this one has leave that one up well i'll control okay. on this one all right that's okay one thing to really consider, guys, and if you're going to be shooting macro and stuff like that, I mean, look how long this center column is, okay? And that center column can really get in the way. And what I mean by that, when you open these legs up and you want to be like way out on the ground like this, whoops, I just ding the bell. <laughs> I've got legs going everywhere, man. Uh, you can see this center column is going to stop you from getting close to the ground, yeah. okay? With this one, I can put the legs almost out 90 degrees and it'll be flat on the ground yeah. so i can so get, get really lower, really low lower. perspective yep. and and you know often we, when we talk about um uh, perspective you know sometimes getting really really low it just changes the composition of your image and it's a must man totally you need to get into those yep. leading lines or get into that thing that's in the foreground and just it just adds so much more versatility when you can get low and if you're shooting macro it's a must yeah. man so be really really careful of how long your center column is, yeah. you know. When now, there are some center columns that actually can pull out and, and go in reverse. So you, you actually can. got your camera hanging below the tripod. Yeah, you can. Yeah, if you yeah. want to get really close to the ground. Yeah, that's it. I've yeah, seen so a couple of those. There are some. Yeah, yeah, there are some. And you can also buy some, and I've seen before, and we'll talk about monopods in a minute, where you can screw one leg off and use it as a monopod if you think you're going to have a need for that. Yeah. But yeah, really, I don't know. Yeah. So anyway, so what are the different heads? Let's talk about a few different heads. Okay. Okay. Cool. So on Big Bertha here, you can see this is a ball head, okay? This head here, it's a ball head, and what makes it a ball, you know that, yeah, buddy. Yeah, And what makes it a ball head is it's got the big ball section here, and there's one release, and you can see I can go any direction with this head. It makes it really, really nice to adjust my camera, you know, while it's on that ball head. Highly recommend it. I love, I love this big ball head. I love the big knob. I've got big hands, so for me, having having um, ease of access to move my camera around is just awesome. And I'll show you something in a minute that makes it even better. And then we've got this style of head here. Very similar, it's a ball head, but it has a pistol grip, okay? So you can see you can just grab the pistol and Brent, you want to talk about this one? Because this yeah. is yours. So I mean, I you love, love this one, don't I you? love this. You know, yeah. I, I use it for landscape photography all the time. So if I'm shooting in landscape orientation mode, I'll have it like that. And then if I want to go to portrait orientation mode, I'll just go like this. It's nice. And let it go and That's it nice. and it grabs it. It grabs the ball. Yep. Uh, you know, when you when you release this pistol grip. So basically you you pull the pistol like that and that that makes it, that releases it, and when you let go, it, it grabs the ball and it makes it, you know, yeah. stable. Yeah, I've got to yeah. say, one thing about um, this style over, say you went to something like this little travel here, yeah. I mean, um, you've got more room to grip on and really make a change fast. Like this little thing here with my yeah. big hands, it's really fiddly. And I mean, it's okay if you need a little travel tripod on the go, but man, I tell you what, I would choose something with a bigger grip or like I showed you before that I can really get, I mean, I've got big hands. So <laughs> to get my hands onto yeah. the knob and move it around. Yeah. So, I mean, that's one the one disadvantage when you go to smaller ball heads. Often the little release mechanism is a small. That's yeah. what I've found anyway. So cool. And there's there's one other type, um, guys, and you've probably seen it before. We don't have one here to show you. We might drop an image in, but they've basically got, it's like a three axis uh, yes. um, um, mm. ball head. Honestly, I just find them cumbersome, confusing. Yeah. Um, they just, I'm sure people love them out there. And if you love them, that's fine. There's not a problem with that. Mm-hmm. I just, I it just, just takes longer to, to get your, <laughs> get your um, composition. Yeah. You know? It's just like, I mean, I get confused. There's like three things yeah. and then it goes anyway. And this, you know, the other thing I find about it too, man, I've played one before is when it's strapped to your pack and you're walking through the bush, 
Man, those little handles, man, they're getting caught on everything and it's yeah. just it's just yeah. not as easy, you know. Harder little mechanism to pack and just, yeah. So, I'd highly recommend whatever you get, get a ball head because they're just the bomb. Yeah. <laughs> they just make it so much easier. Definitely. So, what, cool. about, what about this one, Johnny? Oh, yeah. So, we should we should just tell people that. Though. And you've probably seen these out there as well. So, this is a video head, okay, guys? And it's a monopod. Yeah, so this is, all, this is a monopod too, what we are talking about before. This is one that is set up for video. And basically, the idea of these is called a fluid head. So, you can pan and tilt and that a lot easier so if you see something like this online and the head's there so at least you'll know what it is it's probably no use to most photographers but if you're doing a bit of video um yeah i, I would still honestly if you're a photographer out there and you're doing more stills than video don't worry about a video head get yourself a good ball head i mean a lot of the stuff we shoot with a static shot, I'm on my um, bigger tripod that I showed you before for video, so I wouldn't even worry about video heads, but at least you know what it is and what to look for. All right, let's talk about the legs and the and the Definitely. clamping mechanism, yeah. mechanism in might, the legs. I'll show this little one here because yeah. that's the other good comparison. So, so this is another thing that's a big personal preference, Brett. Yeah. You know, I, I personally, I love this type. So it's a, a turn and a release and a turn and a lock. So I, I, I prefer this. Mm. I find it a lot quicker. How about yourself? I, I find these take me longer to get open and and into position than these. Okay. However, these ones, you know, this is with the little clip. The clip goes like that and then it and clips it back down. and it locks down. But sometimes it starts getting loose. Yeah. And once it's loose, you actually got to get a special tool to get in there and tighten it up. Now, if you're out in the wilderness mm -hmm. and you don't have that tool and it's loose, yep. your Definitely. tripod's not going to be stable and, yeah. you, and you're screwed, basically. So these ones are probably more, you know, sustainable yeah i definitely agree mate I, actually the, the thing i found with this one if you don't keep the maintenance up to this clip type there man i tell you what they're going to lock up and you won't be able to lock your tripod yeah. down because what happens you get sand and grid or mud or whatever in there and i tell you they just they just get stuck and you can't move it and the other great thing about these it's really easy without a tool in the field just to keep unscrewing this all the way and that whole section of tripod will slide out and you'll be able to just get in there and clean it up in the field without any tools. So, I mean, I'm a big fan of the quick release type. Again, guys, this is something that's personal preference. Mm. Go to your local camera store, try both of them, see see how you feel about it. But um, like Brent said, he likes the other one because it's the, the quicker. Quick, the quick yeah. He finds it quicker. Yeah. I mean, I, I find it more cumbersome because I just I just yeah. find I'm just so quick and easy to do under yeah. the tree and pull them out, oh, you know, yeah. and do them up. So maybe that, I'm doing it all wrong, Johnny. Yeah, no, that's, it's what you're used to too, guys. It really is, and what you prefer. There's no, yeah. there's no right or wrong answer here. Okay, yeah. so this type you can get in the field and, and you can easily undo, you know, without yeah. a tool. The other type, if you don't have a tool and it comes loose, man, epic fail. I've, yeah. I've actually had that. Yeah. I've had one of the things drop out, and because that's it, my tripod's done. I can't yeah. if I can't fix that up in the field put another bolt in or whatever it's done yeah. that's it man cool so and we've talked about different tripods we've talked about the different heads now i wanted to talk about uh quickly and i'll need my big bertha up here again okay. in a minute there we go i wanted to talk about quickly attaching your camera to the the tripod the little plate so quick, quick release quick plate. release plates yeah, yeah that's what i was trying to think of so there's two types so this one here is just the straight screw onto your bottom of the camera yeah. and that just goes in and locks it down in portrait mode so basically your camera's stuck like that in portrait, yeah. okay? And then, then you have to tilt the, you will hold that one straight for me, buddy. Yeah. And then you, once your camera's locked in there, sorry, in landscape mode, not portrait, Jesus, man, I, I didn't like coffee, hang on a sec. <laughs> <laughs> coffee, yeah, yo. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so it's locked down in landscape mode. And then when you need to get in portrait mode, you've got to flop it over like that. So then your camera would be in portrait mode like that, okay? Yeah. But what happens, what happens with that, you can see from this point, to that point, your camera is now off axis. Yeah. Okay. So, and what I mean by that is your camera's moved from here with your composition to over here. And yeah. now, you, now you're now going to have to move your tripod to get it back onto composition. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that's one thing I don't like about this style of plate. Okay. And, and guys, the rule of thumb when you're out shooting, particularly landscape, is always take a landscape a, a landscape perspective and a portrait perspective. Orientation. Shot. Orientation. That's yeah. what I meant. Yeah. See, so you know what I mean. <laughs> That's why he's here. <laughs> Orientation. No, I'm so, just, I'm just the uh, tripod handy yeah, yeah, over man. dude. I tell you what, man, you aced it too, bro. Hey, you rock, man. Hey, this you is rock. hard work. I know, man. You rock it, bro. <laughs> so anyway, we're just about to wrap up, guys. We're nearly there. So just stick with me. This is a big one. And I really, I really love these things. So what this is called is called an L bracket. L to the bracket. L to the bracket. And you can see it's L shaped like love. Photography love. <laughs> anyway, and what that does, it sits on your camera like this, okay? And basically, what it's done, it's just giving you. Uh, the same as the other thing, but on the side as well. So it's giving you two plates. One that you can use for landscape, 
perspective. Yeah. No, orientation. Orientation. <laughs> <laughs> and portrait orientation. <laughs> so what happens, guys, when you've got locked down your tripod? And you're, that way, yeah, what you happens when you lock down your tripod? You can see all I've got to do is quick release my camera and flip it over. And my camera has stayed on the same axis. Yeah. It's really, really fast to switch between landscape and portrait. Landscape and portrait. So, man, I'm a big fan of the old bracket. Downside is adds a little bit of bulk and a tiny bit of weight to your camera. But, man, I tell you what, um, for having that versatility to flip it, both um, orientations, yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's a must, man. So, right. so, man, that's it. That's that's firstly my little roundup of tripods. If you haven't got one and you've got those other things, obviously a camera and a lens and a good camera bag, good sturdy camera bag, Look at getting a tripod next yeah. because it's a next bit of equipment that can just open up your creative choices. You know, there's so many things, you know, low light, longer shutter speeds, you know, when you start stacking filters and doing your long exposures, there's just, you know, macro work. There's just so much more opportunity um, to shoot different types of and different uh, looks of photography yeah. once you get your tripod, mate. Um, yeah, jump out there and do it. And guys, if you have any questions or comments about tripods or you have anything to add, we'd love to see it, man. Or you can either tweet me at ijohnny, I-J-O-H-N-Y, or leave a comment below this video, man. We'd love to hear your feedback on tripods. And if you've got anything to add, we always love that too, don't we, matey? Definitely, yeah. Leave comments below. Cool, man. It's been another awesome show. Yeah. Uh, I need to get home and get back on my scooter because I'm missing it. <laughs> I miss yeah. my scooter, y'all. It's yeah. awesome, man. And thanks, Johnny, for sharing those inspirational images. I love the suck out images, man. Oh, yeah. Those suck are the out. Best. Suck yeah. out. My, it's, it's fun, man. It's really fun. And guys, we hope that's given you some information for going out and when you've got to purchase your tripod. And, and don't don't discount secondhand. I really, I'm going to keep saying that. You know, don't discount looking at secondhand. You know, eBay, I think Amazon even does secondhand stuff now. Yeah. There's plenty of places. I'm sure your local camera club people are upgrading their um, tripods. You know, you can always look at getting one secondhand there. But um, and and don't don't think you have to go and spend thousands on a tripod. You know, if you if you can't find a good secondhand one, there's some great Chinese um, knockoff type brands that are, that, are, that they're just as fine. I've got a mate who's used a, a Chinese brand, I think, for the last five years, and he's been in salt water. And man, the thing is still going. Yeah, it's still going. There's well, nothing isn't, wrong. Isn't with everything it. made in China anyway? Well, I don't know, but um, anyway, this one yeah. was a cheaper cheaper brand, man. And I okay. swear, this thing is still running yeah. like a bomb. So, like my tripod that I've used up until now, really, for so the past twelve or thirteen or fourteen years. Mm -hmm. Is was well, second hand when I got it. Yeah, I actually borrowed it from a friend. <laughs> borrowed it for life. I will return it one yeah. day, Michelle. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it'll be in pieces <laughs> yeah. and probably <laughs> aluminum. Dust. Yeah. Uh, and dust. Yeah, <laughs> that's it. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> cool, man. All awesome, right. guys. Awesome show. We hope you enjoyed it. And uh, yeah, we'll see you next week. We'll see you next week. Hey, by the way, what? Brent, I believe you may have something to give away to the guy. Do you have something you want to talk about yet? I don't know. Remind me. Remind me. Haven't you been working on a new little free mini course? Oh yes. Have you got something? Yes, I got a couple of free mini courses. Oh, so this is exciting, depending on what you guys, guys are interested in, whether it's portrait photography, landscape photography, mm -hmm. post processing, which Johnny's the expert at, or making money <laughs> from photography, I've got a couple of free mini courses. Which probably by the time this goes to air, it might be ready. Actually, maybe the following week. Yeah, but anyway, yeah. keep a lookout, guys, because we're both working on some free mini courses that we want to give to you guys to make sure, you know, we're giving you all the information to help you out as much as we can to, to master your your yeah. your photography. And uh, yeah, man, keep an eye out because that's going to happen very soon. We've been working yeah. really, really hard to get this done. And, and as you guys know, we're, we're extremely passionate about helping other photographers achieve their goals. And we just want to give this stuff away and, and share the photo love, don't we, brother? Awesome, yeah. Cool, so man. We'll catch you guys next week. See, See you next week. Bye. Bye. To find out more, go to shareinspirecreate.com. Clap coming up. Clap. <laughs> Clap coming up. Sorry, Russell. Uh, oh, my sorry. God. That's, okay. a, that's a dinger. Okay, there we go. Okay, there we go.